glorious weekend off at last. Those pesky student twerps have made me so tired this week. Now I want to get out of this dusty, broken mess of a house. My laboratory needs a spring clean too, but I'm not doing that. Dodo, my annoying sister, can do it. She always ruins my experiments. One experiment happened to blow up in my face and caused me severe bleeding to my nostril hair. Anyway, I'm going to take a trip to Chester today to buy a new iPod because my current MP3 player will do everything but play music and it's got my lecture notes on it in the form of a wav. I can hear Bruno swearing in the background, but I don't fucking care. Right, enough of this rambling to the mantelpiece. Because I'm rather hungry at the moment. I think before going to Chester I will pay a visit to Kiki, the owner of the village chef. Which, for those of you who don't know, is a fish and chip shop in Little Neston. I think it's rather good, especially when it's closed. I hope Kiki survived the war of Saddam's reign. Now where's my hat? Oh, there it is. Oh shit, not the fireplace. Fuck, my hat is in ashes. Mr. Dodd's Adventures Hello, viewers. It is me, Mac. I went to the toilet before, and now it's broken, and so I don't know when I will be going again. Anyway, enough about my day, because I'm here to talk about Dodds, in case you don't understand what's happening, because you haven't got two brains to rub together. So what's happening? Mr. Dodd is off on a jaunt today to Chester, but as he stated before, his stomach has started to rumble, and so he is off to his favourite chippy. He arrives at opening time as he sees Kiki unlocking the door. Kiki welcomes him in. Hello Mr Todd, what will your stomach require today? It's Mr Todd actually. Just a minute Kiki, I'm trying to decide what to choose. My eyesight is so fucking blurred. Even with my four pairs of Saturday glasses on. I still can't make out the menu. What does that say? Pineapple pizza or pepperoni pie? Just at that moment, a reasonably sized man wedges himself through the door. He obviously hasn't tried the Atkins diet. Oh wait, it's Mr. Peach. Kiki's face lights up when he realises it's him. Hello, Kiki. I'll have the usual, please. Thank you, Mr. Peach. So you want everything off the menu again, yes? You got it. Oh, hello, Stephen. Ryan, what are you doing here? I hope you haven't ordered anything before me. Otherwise, I won't get everything off the menu then, will I? You will ruin my Saturday tradition. Oh, don't worry, I haven't. In fact, I'm not even hungry anymore. The sight of you has made me sick. What was that, Dodd? Oh, nothing. Nothing I don't want you to hear anyway. Then get the fuck out of here. You're taking up my breathing space. Right, Kiki. How long will the entire menu take to make? I've got the bakery van running outside. Oh, a conservative estimate would be about three hours, Mr. Peach. Okay. I should have enough petrol. Now, um, where was I? Well, uh, Mr. Dodd finds himself going in the direction of a Mersey railway train station because he wants to go to Chester to spend his day off. However, his trouble starts as soon as he parks his Lardo at Hootham train station and spots that a group of people whom I will politely call chavs, because, well, scum is what they are. You have to agree with me there. <laughs> Blocking his entrance to the platform. That's what they were doing. What are you staring at? Why don't you take a picture? It will last longer. 
may I politely ask you boys to shunt yourselves off to a 90 degrees angle so that my person may have passage to my appointed train? You fucking what? My train. Your pathetically shaped bodies are blocking my rightful access. We don't want no fucking trouble, mate. Well, get out of the way then, you uneducated louts. And so, Dodd pushes the young hooligans out of the way with all his might, like he is a prize fighter. The reality is that he has an extendo boxing glove in his back pocket. He bought it off eBay to ward off chavs, especially for chavs. Just at that moment, his train arrives, and he almost misses it. In fact, he only catches the train by running alongside it and jumping onto it just as the door closes, neatly trapping his coat. Therefore, he has to stand by the door for all the journey to Chester. Only when the train arrives in the old Roman city can he free himself onto a platform. So, this is Chester. I wonder what I should do now. The last time I visited, I noticed that there was a distinct lack of science shops. I remember seeing a flower shop near one, which I bought some flowers for my mother from once. This was after she was dead. I'd forgotten how big Chester was. I could get lost here because I don't have any sense of direction. Because after all, I'm Doddery. Hence the name Dodd. Okay, let's see now. I've got my torn map somewhere with me. Now the nearest store that sells iPod is located in this direction. The store is called the iPod Store. It's next to Harrods. Oh wait, sorry, that's in London. God, he is boring. I'll take over from his completely monotonous voice to save us all from passing into narcolepsy. So, Doddery Dodd walks on and on and on, round and round and round and round and round in circles, until he finally finds the store that he had already passed 150 times. Excuse me, sir, does this store sell iPods? This is the iPod store, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't sell them. But we do have a broken one in the back we found in the wheelie bin next to McDonald's. It has every mod feature. You can alter the contrast and the brightness, but it doesn't have a degorse button. I got a sense of deja vu. I'm sure I heard that before when I used to work for Saddam, the dead tosser. Well, if you have it, then can I have it? One moment. Uh, let me see. It'll, well, it'll cost you a lot of money, though. That's in nothing. The store clerk gives Mr. Dodd the broken iPod, and he leaves skipping gaily away. As he makes the first step outside of the store, his iPod is nicked immediately by a passing jogger, who then casually puts it on as he is jogging along. You buy my broken iPod! What the fuck? It was Nick the second I left the store. I want a refund. You didn't pay a penny for it, you idiot! Well, uh, what do I say to that? <laughs> Not much, it wasn't my iPod. My PS3 rules. It's a 60 gigabyte one and it can play PS2 games after all. Xbox, on the other hand, completely sucks. Now, um, back to the story. Mr. Dart now, quite pissed off, continues his search for yet another iPod. He asks a large group of random people in the street for directions. Excuse me, fellow countrymen, but I'm lost in Chester. Could you possibly direct me to the nearest store where I can partake in the purchase of an iPod? But we are Chinese! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, we don't speak English either. We don't have a clue where anyone is. We are going to try. We are going to try. We are going to Next to game. We are going to try. We are going to try. Well, thank you, fellas, for your Russian help. But we are from Shanghai, not Valley Rostock. After that, um, strange conversation, Mr. Dodd finds the shop selling iPods. The Apple Store which also sells rotten apples. 
What do you fucking want? You look like an ice cream man. I'll take that multicolored iPod, please. I'll take the pink version, thanks. Okay, and um, that'll be a hundred pounds, please. Oh, uh, wait, I, uh, I, I forgot to add on the zero. What? Oh dear! No OEP discount? Get bent. I'm in a business here, and you just swanned in off the street. Jesus, just get fucked, will ya? Okay, okay. No need for violence in your dictionary. I'll take the iPod. Whatever the cost. Okay, that'll be two thousand quid. But you said before... Next! Man, what a rip-off. I feel so ripped off. God, he is a rip-off. I've never been so ripped off in my ripped-off life. Oh no, it's you, the school teacher on a Saturday. Fuck me. Bruno, why the hell are you out having a good time? You should be at home doing my homework that I sent you yesterday. You should know that from the minute you get home until the minute you go to bed, you should be doing nothing but my homework. Do you understand me? I never do that, mate. I go on Grand Theft Auto right through the day. And you look it as well. You should have brought your homework with you, young man. You could have written something on the bus. Or even walking around town as you are now. Well, that's not possible. My mother ate my homework. Did she now? Does it look like I care a toss? No, Bruno. Because I set homework and I expect certain standards. Even from students at another school who I don't even associate with. Do you understand me? What's that you got there, sir? Looks mint. It is mint. It cost me £2,000. So for your information, yes, it is mint. Could I have a listen to what you have on there? It sounds boss. Well, all right then. But please don't drop it. Or be careful with it. You fuckwit! Detention right now! Walk your schoolboy behind into McDonald's! And put on your dunce hat! And buy me a cheeseburger! And then shut your horse mouth up! Well, you told me not to be careful with it! Your parents or legal guardians will have to pay a dickbuster loan for this criminal behaviour! If I had my notebook in front of me, I would be writing down that you are a no good son of a bull! As Mr. Dodd is ranting and raving, Bruno conveniently picks up the iPod, which incidentally isn't broken, and runs off with it. Just wait until Monday, and you will be in detention, young man. And not just you either. When your children and your children's children start at my school, I might be older than an oak tree by then, but I will still be working there. And I will crown them too! Now, how do I get out of this forsaken place and get my aging behind back to Neston? At that moment, Dodd finds a bus pulling up beside him because he has been standing in the bus station and he is blocking all the public transport. Driver, may I just ask you if you are perchance driving this auto bus towards the direction of Neston? Yeah, probably. Have you got a ticket? No. Then get on. Just as Mr. Dodd's C-22 bus departs for the small town of Neston, it drives up Northgate Street over the Shropshire Union Canal, and we see a familiar sight. The jogger who so ruthlessly stole Dodd's crappy iPod from earlier is bored of the piece of shit already. So what does he do when he sees a canal enter his eyesight? He flings off the white plasticky piece of useless junk into the murky waters. It is exactly what I would have done, in fact. And so we end this episode in which Dodd went into the big city of Chester completely iPodless. And now he leaves it going into the sunset, back to Neston, just as iPodless as before. Oh, wait a minute. Something's happening by the side of the canal as I speak. La la la. Oh, what a 
glorious day, the shiny day after day. Oh, what's this? An eye, Bob? Perhaps it would be kinder to throw it back. Characters in this episode do not represent people in real life. Okay.